Now you've heard the phrase that you gotta spend money to make money, but what if I told you that that was also true of marketing as well? When it comes to building your brand and marketing your content, you gotta give a little to get a little. Now this video is mostly going to be intended for nonfiction and business owners as well, but there's also gonna be elements that may apply to fiction as well. So keep watching if you wanna learn a thing or two from your homegirl, Lauren. <laughs> Based on my experience, this is the typical book journey. You decide to write a book, you write it, you finish it, you edit it, you publish it, and then you market it. But I feel like what happens when you go through that typical author journey is that at the end you realize, oh shoot, I'm the one who has to market this thing. That's going to be assumed if you're self-publishing or maybe hybrid publishing, each press is kind of a little bit different. Um, but especially if you're working with a press, it may come as a bit of a surprise that, hey, they're not necessarily going to do a deep dive into marketing for every single one of those books. So usually the marketing and promotion will oftentimes lie on the shoulders of the author, of the person who made it. So I feel like when it comes to this particular book journey of doing the marketing like towards the end or after it's published, you're usually scrambling to build an audience of some kind or to build awareness or to even create a brand. So allow me to introduce a potentially new model that I do think is worth exploring where marketing isn't at the end, but it's more so in the beginning. And this looks like, especially if you're nonfiction or a business owner, identifying your niche, right? This is like business 101. This is writing a book 101. You're talking about a very particular subject that you have some sort of experience or expertise in. The second part is going to be identifying the audience that is going to be absorbing that kind of content, this sort of niche that you wanna be talking about and surrounding yourself with. The third one is going to be exploring different platforms, right? For starting with your niche, thinking about who's gonna be in that niche. We need to also be thinking about where are those people hanging out? Where are they getting their content? Where are they getting their information? This could be both physical and virtual. From there, we wanna start creating meaningful content around not just the subject matter itself, but also thinking ahead in terms of their goals, in terms of their needs, in terms of their challenges, in terms of maybe common FAQs that they might have. That's where you start connecting with your, audi with your audience and starting to build some of that rapport, that trust, a little bit of that consistency and identifying very particular problems for a very particular group of people. As you kind of start playing around with content in different types of content, different forms of content, kind of developing your voice over time, getting familiar with the kind of audience that is going to be listening to and being receptive to the kind of content you're putting out, this is where you start to loosely develop a brand around the kind of content and subject matter that you are identifying yourself with or that you're surrounding yourself with, right? And this could evolve, this could change, this could be modified over time and that's okay. We're just sort of putting a bit of a loose structure to everything that you've been talking about so far. Now that you've interacted with your target audience, you know what their pain points are, you've maybe directly interacted with them through webinars, through comments, through follows, through whatever, this is going to be a really great way to inform the content of your book if slash when you decide to become an author. From there, you would write it, you would edit it, you would publish it in whatever way you want. I have extra videos on different publishing paths if that's of interest to you. And then from there, it's a little bit easier to promote because you've already done a little bit of that legwork in the beginning. So you might not feel so rushed at the end to start building a brand and to start creating a community or to start connecting with people and promoting your work because really the book is never really just about the book. It's a bite-sized nugget of a bigger experience. So by the time you've done some of that marketing work and promotional work around you and building awareness around the kind of stuff that you like to talk about, the kind of people that you, that you like to connect with, you are now able to leverage that growing brand and audience to promote a little bite-sized experience that's ultimately going to lead to something a little bit bigger, which is your brand. These are like other types of experiences that you offer underneath your like brand umbrella. And the benefit of doing it this way too is that by starting with a little bit of marketing and experimenting with content in the beginning, especially if you're new to it, you're unfamiliar with it, you're a little intimidated by it, as you start to explore those different platforms and the different mediums of communication, this is a really great way to start building trust so that when you do have something to launch like a book, people are already familiar with you, they like you, they trust you, and because they trust you, they're a little more willing to buy something that's new that you represent, that's a part of your brand. In short, content builds communities, brands create awareness. 
Now, if you're struggling to come up with, ta with targeted forms of content, I would like to offer you this particular exercise. What I want you to do is think about where you've maybe struggled the most in your life, either personally or professionally, because in my opinion, what you've struggled the most with definitely makes you an expert in that subject matter or in that particular challenge because you know people's way of thinking. You're able to access them and meet them where they're at because you've been there yourself. Next, think about maybe what you would tell yourself if you could go back in time to that particular point in your life, in your personal or your professional life. What would you say? What kind of advice would you give? What kind of language would you use? How would you wanna communicate with someone or your past self back in that particular point in life? What would you say? And then thirdly, consider what is the most effective way of communicating that information? And that's going to inform not only where your audience is, you know, within the particular niche that you're addressing, but it'll also help you focus down on what different types of platforms or communication mediums would make the most sense for you and feel comfortable for you too. There's going to be a bit of a challenge with this, especially if you're not used to maybe being on camera or being on and like showing your face and putting a face to the bigger brand that you're building or maybe even a company or an agency if that's something that you have. Think about what would be the most effective ways of communicating that information. This could be blogs, this could be videos, this could be newsletters, this could be public speaking and podcasts, this could be local or regional events, this could be webinars, it could be XYZ. The possibilities are pretty endless, especially when it seems like there's a new platform coming out coming out every year. <laughs> For me at least, writing is a really great way to be extremely intentional about my language, but I feel like if I have a bigger idea to, to share or a lot of information to convey, for me it's just easier to just do it all verbally. So I like to do a combination of videos and writing. And for you, as you start to explore what you're comfortable with, where your audience is, kind of playing around with it because it's okay to play and be curious, you might start to gradually feel a little bit more comfortable with some of these different mediums that you're maybe playing around with. And the other question that I want to ask you as a follow-up is how often do you feel like you're able to communicate that kind of information in that kind of way? If I'm able to commit to once a week for YouTube videos, if that's my one and only medium that I have the bandwidth to do and I'm motivated to do it, then it's better than nothing. And the goal with building this kind of content strategy is attracting and building a community, an engaged community, because I think numbers are one thing. I think numbers are a very easy metric to lean on when it comes to counting the success of your platform, like followers, like subscribers, like view counts, like likes, like reposts or whatever. I think those are all really great metrics, but I personally care a lot more about engagement. I wanna be able to interact with the kind of people who are tapping into what I have to say, because by building that rapport and talking with people individually, I think that's a really, really great way to build a genuine sense of community rather than just creating a Facebook page and calling it a community. I try to respond to every single one of my YouTube comments. I really, really try. It's a little bit hard. If I have to get to it later, I will. But even as a one man band, I can tell you that I try to be in incredibly intentional with the kinds of conversations individually that I'm having people in the comment, in, you know, having with people in the comments below. So that was kind of a little bit about content strategy. If we're talking about building a brand, right? Like sticking your face onto your company, onto your business, creating a more personal brand, we're gonna be talking about what that is, some of the components and what your goal is with that as well. Now, in my own words, I think that a brand is all about communicating what you wanna say, how you wanna say it, and who you wanna say it to, which kind of lends well into what I was saying before of that you wanna choose a niche, choose the audience that goes with the niche, figure out where they are, and you know that kind of determines you know how you speak and how you present yourself. So I feel like that kind of goes, that, that leads in pretty well. And I also really like what Alex Hermosi has to say if, uh, if you're familiar with him. If not, he just gives a lot of really great straightforward business advice for entrepreneurs and business owners. His take on it is that you are associating something with a particular outcome. There's some kind of association that's happening, right? Like if someone buys a Gucci handbag, they're gonna feel like Kim Kardashian or like in the upper 1% or something. If you buy Nike, that implies that you are an athlete. Now with me and my brand, my whole thing is I'm trying to create transparency around the book business and arm authorpreneurs in particular, you know, authors who are also business people or business people who are also authors with the information that they need to know to A, save them time, 
B, tell them what they need to do. C, give them the resources, resources that they need to do it. And also build trust and build community and build loyalty and to just build a supportive community where we consider other perspectives and help one another out with different problems that we have that have to do with books or using books as a tool for something bigger. That's my whole, that's my whole thing. And what really makes this whole thing sticky, what's gonna help make your brand sticky is knowing very clearly what your mission is, what your vision is, what your values are, and just in general, the kind of experience that you want to provide. My mission, like I said, is to create transparency around the book business. My vision is to create a bigger community and more transparent, widespread conversations around books and how they are a business, but they should still have a human quality about it. My values are authenticity, balance, connection, dependability, and simplicity. And my experience that I wanna offer is just getting people talking and considering different perspectives and challenging their thinking a little bit while simultaneously humbly challenging the industry of books as a whole. And if you wanna learn a little bit more about branding and kind of diving a little bit deeper into that, I also have a video on brand building with help from Pinterest and Canva. And this also has to do with some of these basic components that I'm talking about, but it also has to do with creating a visual representation of those things with help from resources like Pinterest and Canva. <laughs> so if you, wanna, if you wanna check that out, be sure to do that after this video. But really when it comes to developing your brand versus maybe content strategy, your goal with this is building awareness, right? Content is for communities, branding is for awareness. And the metric that I think you wanna to use to kind of help measure the success of your branding are the kinds of opportunities that you're getting. That's an incredibly subjective thing to say, but I would also say that people have their own individual definitions of success for them if they're a sole proprietor or for their business if they maybe have a team built out or something. Different versions of success are gonna be applicable for different people. And they might measure that in different ways like opportunities, right? So if our goal is awareness, I think personally it makes sense to measure that in opportunities but if you want to have like a direct specific measurement or you know form of metric for you I think that would be a really great conversation to have with maybe your internal team members or to sit down and brainstorm it for yourself if you're just kind of a one-man band and examples of opportunities too before I forget also includes not just content but also like networking right to get some of those spots on stage if you want that or to get slots on podcasts, for example, right? It's going to look different for different people depending on the kind of niche that they're in. And the way that these things fit together when it comes to content marketing or, you know, in branding, this has to do with putting a face to the experience or putting a face to the company, putting a face to the agency or to the enterprise or whatever kind of system you have going on. A brand without a face, in my opinion, just makes you a little bit less trustworthy. It just seems a little more colder. It seems a little more corporate-y. It just seems like a one of the many type of experience. But if you are able to put a face to your brand, somehow people people just like that kind of thing. It makes them feel like you're a little bit more personal. Like there is a human element to business with whatever kind of business you're doing. It makes you seem like you are a, that, that you're comfortable grabbing a cup of coffee with someone and talking with them about your problems and creating a solution together, right? That's like the ultimate outcome that we want. Businesses like sales, people like answers, right? So if all it takes is a friendly face to give you valuable content in a variety of ways, I personally think that's a win, even if it means, you know, eating up a little bit more of your time or your bandwidth. Personally, that's something that you can do yourself if that's something that you want to hire out for. There's all kinds of people and resources available for that kind of thing. But in my opinion, that's just how some of those, that's just how those two pieces kind of overlap, right? You're just, you're putting a face to the experience. You're putting a face to the solution. You're putting a face to the brand. Now, I know it might seem like we kind of, you know, detoured a little bit from the main conversation of selling books, but really it's going to be hard to sell books if you don't have any other experience out there but the book itself. Either way, whether you're fiction or nonfiction, you want to have something beyond the book, especially in the case of nonfiction. The book is meant to provide a short term answer to an immediate problem that eventually leads to something bigger. Maybe that's doing more coaching and consulting if that's something that you already do. Maybe you want to use the book as like a DIY resource to help someone solve a problem and they find you and connect with you through, I don't know, webinars, through listening to your podcast, through following you on YouTube or LinkedIn or something. And then maybe eventually you would want that same reader to convert into a potential client. That is a phenomenal way to use a book as a tool. The book 
needs to be high quality. It needs to provide value. It needs to provide actual answers to things because for me, there's nothing more frustrating than thinking someone's going to solve my problem because they have a really prestigious background and then all I get are case studies in the book. Like I didn't, I would have gone to your website if I wanted to read your testimonials and case studies. So with anything that you create, it has to be genuine free value that you're giving away. Leverage the experience that you've gone through as a business owner or as an entrepreneur and use that as someone like me, pay it forward by benefiting someone else and saving them time or educating them on what they need to know if they're gonna do X, Y, Z. Books are a phenomenal opportunity to create free value. Well, maybe not free because you're getting paid for it, but it's a great way to generate leads. It's a great way to make a little cash on the side if you wanna use you know, whatever you make off books to fund something else, you totally can. There are so many cool ways that you can use a book. That's why I say that you need to have a game plan before the book, ideally in a perfect world. If you've already written a book and you're learning about this now and you wanna write another book, great, you are well set up. <laughs> So this would be an excellent time to talk about long-term versus short-term marketing. And I really like these kinds of conversations because I think it really constructively, int my, my intent is to, in is to constru constructively challenge people's thinking. That was a little clunky coming out. <laughs> so long-term and short-term, you can sort of imply what I'm gonna be talking about with long-term. This has to do with creating more organic content. It's organic marketing, right? You are creating everything. You are, you are, building, you are building a lot of these integral foundational pieces for long-term success or for long-term engagement or for, you know, building brand loyalty and, you know, communication with different people who might come across you and maybe convert into a buyer or a client or something. You are building out foundational, very integral, important foundational elements over time that contribute to or, or that can be funneled toward these short-term projects, like a book, for example, or like a product that you're wanting to push, or like X, Y, Z, A, B, C that you're launching. This, this plays heavily, heavily, heavily into brand recognition, into your reputation, into customer and brand loyalty. That's, that's a huge part of what makes any kind of business venture or experience meaningful and that people trust it and like it and are willing to recommend it to other people that they think could benefit it too because they personally have benefited from it, right? That's probably the highest form of marketing is, is word of mouth. You just can't beat word of mouth because people like recommendations from people they like, know, and trust. And if you've gone through it, if, you've, if, they, if people have interacted with you in some way, whether it's liking a video, commenting on a post, buying a book, or attending a webinar, if they had a great experience to begin with because you care about value and quality and you're packaging it in a very human way through stories, through education, through value, that's just gonna, that's gonna make me want to tell someone about this. Like how the heck do people not know more about this? How do people not know more about whatever it is? Like that's just, I just, I'm getting really excited about this. It's just a phenomenal way to organically market yourself and build that awareness, that loyalty, that reputation. And then you also have short-term marketing. And this is really, really great for temporary finite focus on one particular thing. People do this all the time for promoting books, for promoting movies, for promoting podcasts or songs even. And usually these are gonna be in the form of campaigns, like bestseller lists are probably a really great example. That's like the first one that comes to mind if we're talking about books. Like everyone wants to be a New York Times bestseller. Everyone wants to be a USA Today bestseller. There's usually highly targeted campaigns for that kind of thing that use ebooks a lot of the time ebooks just because it's a little bit easier to distribute and a little bit cheaper this is ads this is pr Th these are promotions these are features these are these can take a lot of different forms this all contributes to awareness of the thing it doesn't necessarily mean people are going to buy you're just creating a lot of mass visibility for a particular group of people hoping that they will convert. It may or may not convert in sales, it really just depends. But what is great about short-term marketing is that it's really good to use for social proof or credibility of some kind. If you want to feature the Kirkus review that you got on your book, you could totally put that on your website. Say that Kirkus said this about my book, and it just has to do with more of like a professionalism thing, like an image kind of thing, I would say. And it's not to say that there are inherently good or bad qualities about long-term or short-term marketing. It just has to do with what your goals are or what it is that you value. Everyone, like I said, has their own definition of success, has their own game plan, something that they wanna do. It just depends on what you value and what your goals are. So with that all being said, that was a lot of information. I do kinda wanna summarize everything that I've said. And the biggest thing that I can communicate to you based on 
everything is that marketing is always a marathon. It's almost never a sprint. If it is a sprint, it's like a sprint within the marathon that usually takes the form of a campaign of some kind. So th this is a difference between building and highlighting. That organic long-term marketing, you are building something, you are creating something. When it comes to that short-term campaign promo-y type short-term marketing, that has to do with highlighting something or you know, putting a lot of specified attention on one particular thing, right? But generally, you are always going to be marketing something. I don't think, depending on what your goals are, I think you'll be disappointed putting money towards short-term marketing, hoping that it'll extend into something bigger. I would say that more often than not, that's kind of the exception rather than the norm. Like, oh, you know, my book was featured on Kirkus and suddenly everyone wants to buy it. I think that is a lot more rare than people think. It's different forms of visibility and interactions, really. And the only other thing that I want to say is to consider your version of success to help inform you of what's right for you as an authorpreneur, as someone, a business owner who's writing a book or as an author who's starting a business. So I really hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing because if you've found value in it, chances are someone else will too. And by liking and subscribing, it helps other people discover the channel as well. And also, if you wanna learn a bit more about marketing, definitely be sure to check out my how to create an author brand video. It's a little bit older, but it's got some valuable nuggets just in case you want a little more pointers on kind how all that works so i hope it was helpful but definitely leave your comments uh questions suggestions in the uh, section down below and i'll see you in the next video take care bye